So I'm Dean of Engineering and Computing. And day-to-day uh, -day is basically working with students, faculty, and our stakeholders, building relationship with external stakeholders from industry, from government, as well as our own uh, board of trustees and uh, government of South Carolina. So just trying to create the best opportunities for our students where we can add value to our students and to faculty, the work that they do. I started with IoT personally before I moved to South Carolina, which I did two years ago. But uh, in my role as dean, uh, IoT has become sort of uh, prevalent in everything that we do. And our researchers have been doing this for a while in many different areas. So they started to uh, sort of focus their effort. And we had the opportunity to work with some partners, such as Boeing, Siemens, et cetera, to really uh, take problems that would be longer term than what industry normally focuses on. So our sweet spot in universities, as you know, is longer term research. So we educate our students in the context of those longer term research and work with uh, our partner companies and industry to uh, close the loop. The explosion in cognitive and the capabilities that are there had really uh, enabled IoT to go to the next level. In particular, now you can close the loop and the system could feed back on itself and improve the way that it operates. So it's not that you just have connected systems, but you've got systems that can learn, that can learn the behavior of human that in interact with it. So it's just a very much more exciting picture that we have now. Uh, for 20 years, uh, some of our researchers have been working with Army on uh, Apache helicopters to do predictive maintenance. So the systems would monitor themselves and the sensors would talk to each other and determine basically what needs to be done. But with Cognitive, now Watson, uh, we uh, basically through the cloud we interact with Watson and through user interfaces that our students and faculty have developed, Watson goes through the unstructured data of manuals and everything else and determines what needs to be done. And in very interesting scores that it assigns to various parts of the system, it tells the maintainers what they need to do very specifically. So in a matter of minutes, you can diagnose the problem and fix it. And in the process, Watson itself goes through another cycle of learning. So again, it gets better for the next time. The whole... Uh, School of Engineering and Computing, and we are fortunate that we have computing in uh, engineering. Uh, it really needs to come together and focus on problems such as personalized X. It's personalized health, security, safety, homes that are occupant aware, appliances that are part of that home that can adapt themselves, that can learn the behavior of the users. This is the way of future. So assistive robotics, human-robot interaction, all of those. And these are areas that actually we are growing in right now. Uh, every year we do a focus hiring of 10 to 15 faculty. And this year's focus for us is uh, basically assistive robotics. So last year we had robotics in general. We had to build some areas. But this year we are trying to go to assistive robotics because it's a university-wide initiative, the way I look at it, even though we drive it in engineering computing, but it fits in with public health, it fits in with social work, it fits in with business, everything. I mean, all these aspects come together because we are addressing societal problems, and this is where we can drive the problem. To me, IoT is like manufacturing 3.0, where you have put sensors on everything, and you can independently monitor uh, the activities of different parts, but the humans are uh, groups that make the connection between the parts. The next level cognitive that goes on top is on top of IoT to me. So it's really smart IoT, the way I see it. Students and what they can do. Uh, I have seen two students with the right tools design a, a 3D printed autonomous UAV that on an iPad I could say take off from here, go land there, takes off, does 100 miles per hour, and goes and sits there. Over the course of one summer, two third year students did that. 10 years ago, this would have taken a whole floor of professional engineers and probably half a million bucks per prototype. These kids did it with 2,500. So you give them the right tools, the right fundamentals, and really get out of their way and let them innovate. To me, that is just unbelievable, the explosion that has happened in that arena.